Because of Frankie, do you want a flying dismount? Or I wouldn't do it on this one. We've got the, um, the new market sales this week are, uh, for the flat. We're looking for like juvenile hurdlers for the season. So the three-year-olds, so you go through all of these kind of, all of these horses maybe, and you're looking at horses probably that have raced from a mile one up. You don't want a two mile necessarily because they're probably too, too slow. So you want a horse like a mile one to a mile and a half really. Three-year-old, that's probably got a bit of form on softish ground that they can handle something in the winter. Um, so you're looking at you're looking at these type of horses, but like you know, you're looking at the previous form rated 57, seven furlong horse is not going to probably make a jump. But obviously, you get the exceptions. I'd write six four nine. The name of the horse needs fast ground, so he might be like more of a autumn, spring kind of juvenile. 86. He's obviously got a decent level of form on the flat, um, and he'd be the one like I'd look at. But I've got to write it down. So I've so I can remember doing the research and then putting it on paper instead of just like flicking a page or whatever. I think going to the sales, cold turkey is my worst fear really because it's hard to, it's hard to get a grip of things. I like to have a list of horses that I want to see before going to the sales. And then you've got the information there to make a better opinion. And then there might be horses you didn't have on your list and you see walk by you and you say, geez, that's a nice horse. And then you say, why didn't I look at that? And then you end up buying a horse when you do more research at the sales and stuff like that. So they're all the stores we've bought um, recently. Uh, a few still for sale if you want one. At this time, it's just gone past 10 o'clock, but usually from we ride out, in the winter time, we'd ride out um, two lots, but work mornings, me, Richie, Kevin Brogan, we'd be in the Jeep and we'd be hopping on different horses so we could ride between four or five horses a lot so we could end up riding ten horses in two lots and just hopping on different ones, especially if it's a schooling morning and stuff. And then we'll be back in at half nine. We'll have tried to have done our rough work for the for declarations the night before. Roughly, if there's horses in a handicap that's definitely going there, you know, we'll, we'll have that kind of sorted, rang, rang the owner and say this is where we're planning to declare. Has that mare finished her meds yet? She's still doing one hand. I'll have to double check with Barry whether she's finished or if she is ready to go. She's not going to be ready to run anyway. I would say Probably not, not. No. And has she got her colours yet that, for that ownership? Colours are ordered, ownership set up, so she's basically ready to go. They were, Allerton should have them with us by next week. And, and she has to go out in the field for eight weeks then? Yeah. Right. As we said. And okay. then bring her back. I think he wants to have a re scan maybe in October. Right. We might take her out of easier and we'll get him done early next week. Yeah. For the, I'll, I'll, I'll tell the owners that, that he, his race there uh, today. Right, I think we're ready to go. I don't want to leave it on a bad note, it didn't jump great. Gets a little bit stubborn sometimes when he's cool. He just wants to do more and more. <laughs> because of Frankie, do you want a flying dismount or I wouldn't do it on this one. We entered him today, so he's gonna he probably run next Tuesday. It's like he's done he's done enough there today. He loves swimming, so he'll probably just have to 
couple of days just swimming now because he's a horse, like, because he gets himself quite revved. He's a horse that keeps himself fit anyway. So he'll have a little swim now, but he probably won't ride out the next two days and just swim. But like these kind of horses, it's about just trying to keep them sweet mentally. If they're not riding out, we're like our John, our main swimming man, he knows pretty much every horse swims. There's a couple, a couple that just don't like it, but I'd say 90% of them will swim. But this fella, yeah, he, he, he's pretty much a fish. And it's a, if it's your birthday, you get chucked in yourself. So, luckily, mine's January, and I'm usually out after second lot racing, so I'm straight out of here. You just leave them on the walk for 10 minutes, dry off, and they come back. Especially at this time of year, when all the horses are coming back in. Um, you know, horses can catch little bugs and stuff like that. So we try and use different rubbers every lot, and then we'll um, we'll wash our bits out as well. Um, Just let with your names on cleaning later. Yeah, um, I think it was. I, I think they tried me once, and I was no good. So <laughs> I wouldn't complain anyway. Like. These buckets are all around the yard and just filled with hot, uh, disinfectant and we wash them. It's very important to wash them after each horse because you're putting them into different horses' mouths like four or five times a day, so. He's done his job. I think we've done ours. That's it. That was like obviously it's it's quiet in July. And it's, it's a chill morning, but in the in the winter, everyone's got to be very prompt and but do the job properly as well. Which you just you need, you need a good team behind you really. So actually you're not riding today, so it's a little bit different, but this is what you would normally have when you're at the races. Uh, I do normally have the, this at the end of the day, to be honest, after racing. Like I typically have one meal a day, have coffee in the morning, coffee on the way racing, never really eat until the end of the day, and these are just like prep pots from online. You get They get sent to the house, and um, you know exactly what you're putting in. You've got the fat content, the calories, the protein, the salt, the sugar, and everything and six minutes in the microwave um, from frozen and it's good to go and it's a proper meal. I suppose through the height of the winter, November, December, January, you're just on the go. Yeah. There's no daylight, you're here, there and everywhere. Mm. Norway's Exeter. Yeah. Up north Carlisle. You're just that easy to get in and eat. Yeah. Bed, yeah, exactly. It's just, it's just you're on the the wheel at that point, and it's it's literally all you need. Like it might not look necessarily appetising, but it's just what you want, and it's uh, very nutritious. No, he's very good, Nathan. Um, but no, it's, it's nice to play with him. He's 33 in the world and um, certainly gets my energy levels going up. But uh, I love squash, yeah. Very competitive, very competitive. It's good fun. What is it about squash that you like? Really you play a lot of it. Is there similarities to racing individual? Uh, just competitiveness, I suppose, because it's a, it's a game and, um, you know, games to 11, you don't have much room to manoeuvre, not a lot of areas to fail on otherwise you lose. 
So, uh, and there's always stuff to work on. You know, there's so much, so, so tactical. And the more you play it, the more specialist it is. And you see like pros like Nathan, and like when they're playing in full, in full swing, it's like unbelievable. And you think, how can they do it? Um, I just love, I love the competition. Yeah, yeah. I, I think more decision making out of anything because everything happens so quickly. Same in a race as well, and you're always trying to think what the opponent is doing, which is the same in a race. If they're going to move quicker in a race, or they're going to hold up and crowd pounce at the last hurdle, or something like that. And you can't. It's, it's it's very similar. I think all sports are very similar, but it, especially when it's such close competition. But and it definitely burns the calories as well. Yeah, he's very, very good. Um, I had a nice play with him. Yeah.